hello and welcome to Inside the Nest, the official show of the Red Hawk Sports Network. I'm John Kosovan. Today is November 2nd, 2020, and that means tomorrow, November 3rd, is Election Day. So we here at RHSN would like to encourage everyone to go out and vote if you so choose, because like sports, voting is a shared experience. It's one day every four years where all Americans can come out and exercise their right to be heard. So speaking of that, this week we asked some MSU athletes to talk about the voting experience and what it means to them. Check it out. Hi, I'm Claudia Challender from the field hockey team, and I just want to encourage you to participate in the upcoming election as every vote matters and your vote could make the difference. Voting in general is very important, but I think this election no matter what your political views are or how you feel about one versus the other, I think it's just really important to get out there and share your views and do what you can to really make a change. Um, so yeah, vote. I'm voting because I want to make a change in my generation. I want to improve my community and I want my votes to be heard. And I am both grateful and empowered to vote since many years ago, both women and African Americans did not have the opportunity to. I voted because I think it's important for our generation to get involved, that our voices be heard, and to make a difference. I think voting is super important because we have the chance to put who we think is best fit for the job in office. Um, this election is super important because there are high stakes on both sides, so I say do your research, know who you're voting for, and I'm proud to say that I voted in my first presidential election. I vote because not voting is not having your voice heard. Every citizen should have their voice heard, and there's no better way than doing that than voting. So, go vote. It's always good to see such enthusiasm for something so vital to the democratic process. Vital to the Montclair process, though, are Red Hawks sports. And like voting, they've obviously been heavily affected by the COVID pandemic. Fortunately, we have an alternative to polling in the form of mail-in ballots, but as far as I know, there's no way to mail in sports so we had to go without them this semester. The same can't be said for some other schools in the NCAA. More on that, Sonny Bartel. The NFL and major college football have been competing for several weeks with the Big Ten the latest conference to resume play. Montclair State's football team recently started practicing and will begin play in the winter and the spring. So what's the difference? It comes down to budgets and NCAA testing protocols. We don't have the same budget, the same resources, um, it, it's, it's two different, you know, worlds in a lot of ways between the power of five conferences and almost everybody else and certainly division three. The decision to cancel the fall sports season due to concerns related to the COVID-19 pandemic was made by the New Jersey Athletic Conference President's Council in July. Chesney is optimistic that when the tests become affordable, Montclair State Athletics will be back. As these tests become more uh, available and uh, more affordable, then it gives us an opportunity as we move forward. Of course, football isn't the only fall sport that has been affected. The NJAC sponsors fall sports, including men's soccer and women's soccer, along with many others. Every fall athlete had a test before coming back to campus this semester, and each athlete has been tested twice since their return. For seniors such as quarterback Jaquil Birch, it'll be business as usual once the Red Hawks take the field. We, we, we want to keep the virus under wraps for now, and we, we got to take that one day at a time. But once we get back, it's like I said, the, the Red Hawk way, it's the same. We're trying to go out and win a championship in any season, the spring, fall, the winter, summer. So that's it. The Red Hawk way doesn't change. Montclair Swimming and Diving Team is preparing for their first virtual meet. A meet unlike anything the team has competed in before will be hosted virtually at four separate schools. Virtual meet will be a merging of results in real time. Uh, we've never done one before, and quite honestly, I've never been a fan of the concept. My assistant and I, uh, Maria Vera, kind of put together what I think is a nice order of events to kind of mix it up. A little bit of fun, a little bit of different distances. Uh, so I'm actually looking forward to it. The beauty of the sport is it's all time driven. Our swimmers know, we all know as a coaching staff, it's when you touch the touch pad and look up at the clock, that's what matters. While this meet is not NCAA sanctioned and scores will not be kept, 
there will be an impartial third party located at each team's location, keeping track of the times. For most of the team members, they never thought that a virtual meet would ever happen, especially during their first collegiate season. I'm not gonna lie, like I was a little upset because like, I kind of like had high hopes. You can't dwell on the past, so you kind of just have to live with it and like, make the best of your opportunities. I'm just happy that we're able to swim right now. And I'm happy like even if we have meets, even if they're virtual. Starting your first collegiate season virtually is hard enough. Senior Sophia Cheravino talks about the possibility of ending virtually. Our season ended the last week of February, so right after that quarantine hit, and I was immediately thinking, was that my last Mets ever? Like, that can't be how it ends. Like, it's just so hard to think, like, everything, all these years I've been working in the pool are just, like, abruptly over, you know what I mean? I can't, I can't come to terms with that. Some of the aspects of the competition will change, like the inability to see your competitor. It is going to be really weird because like I'm really big at competing. I'm like so competitive when it comes to swimming so I feel like me like looking at the competitor like looking them up like on times like swimming times like I feel like it's just going to be like so different. So I think that is what I'm going to miss like kind of the feeling of butterflies in your stomach. Even with all these changes one thing this team doesn't lack is a positive mindset. Swimming is all a mental sport. All mental. Honestly, I'm so confident with our team and everybody's just going to be cheering each other on anyway, so I feel like the environment could stay the same level. Honestly, I think the virtual meet is going to go really well for us because the coaches really believe in racing during practice and that's something that helps us. We're used to racing in practice. We're used to treating practice like it's a meet, so. And we'll be sure to have more about the swim team in our next episode. Now, going from water to ice. I visited the MSU Ice Arena and sat down with the general manager, Rita Mitchell. So I've been here since April of this year working at Montclair State. Uh, previously, I've been in ice rink industry for about 30 years. Rita Mitchell's career around the ice rink led her to become the general manager of Montclair State University's Ice Arena, which is a position she takes great pride in. As far as I know, I, in this industry, I'm the only female general manager. On her office walls are autographs from hockey players and figure skaters, as well as pictures of her son, Adam, learning how to skate at a young age and eventually earning a tryout with his mom's favorite team, the Washington Capitals, whose Stanley Cup championship is still fresh in her memory. Just to watch the Caps after years and years of getting so close, mm -hmm. finally put one in is awesome. Outside of her office are rules implemented for every player and visitor's health, which is shown to be a key factor in making the arena a safe place to be. We're dressing inside in the locker rooms, um, but we're not using the showers or anything where people would really have some crossover. We're being very, very safe here, and the kids are still getting to play the game they love, just not in an organized game situation. Along with the protocols, a new team has arrived at the ice arena looking to add to their trophy case. We just became the new home of the Israeli Olympic team. So it's really exciting to see some of these Olympic hopefuls train here every single day. And the students of the campus, if they're around in the mornings and early afternoons, if they want to come and watch their practices, they can. And we're hoping to see some of the kids, you know, get to watch their practices here in the next few months and aspire to be that as well, right? Because when you see it, you can dream it. And that's what happens here. We try to make dreams come true. For the Red Hawk Sports Network, I'm George Damgochian. In this year's fall semester, the only football activity are practices, like the one behind me. But exactly a year ago today, on November 2nd, 2019, the Red Hawks were down in Glassboro, New Jersey, to face off against Rowan University as the season winded down. Let's see how it went. The Red Hawks put all their fighting spirit into this one. Down 10-0 with three minutes to go in the first half. Jaquil Burke rolling to his left. Connects with Zach Skrivenik for their first score of the game. Take another look. The play action boot throws across his body and hits Skrivenik in stride. 10-7. That was the first of three TDs for Burke on the game. Here's the second one. 56 yards to Kaysan Campbell. Ties things at 17 to the third. And then with five to go in the fourth, this absolute bomb to Carson Johnson for the score. 
clutch it again. Montclair takes the lead on a great leaping catch right there. And then Rowan with one more shot, fourth and goal from the four, and Seamus Nelson wraps up the QB and the game. 24-17, Red Hawk win. That win moved Montclair to four and four on the season, and it was their fourth straight against the Profs. It also kicked off a three-game winning streak to close out last year's football season. That's a wrap for this week's show. You can catch us next week, same Hawk time, same Hawk channel. I'm John Kosaban saying don't forget to vote, and thank you for joining us Inside the Nest. <laughs>